Welcome everyone. We're going to give uh, folks a few minutes here uh, or a minute uh, before we get started in full, but welcome. Uh, hold on and glad to have you all here. All right, I think we have about uh, 19 participants. Um, oh, 20, there's a magic number. I think we're going to get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's special meeting of the Central City Standing Committee. My name is Graciela Gomez Cowger, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer for Schwabi, Williamson, and Wyatt. We are a large uh, law firm here in Portland uh, and seven other cities, actually three other states, including California, of course, Oregon, Washington, and Alaska. This uh, is my first meeting serving as chair of the Central City Standing Committee. I am delighted and humbled to be here before you. Um, Thank you for having me, and I look forward to uh, interacting with all of you. If you uh, have something to say about the Central, C Central City Standing Committee, please do reach out to me directly. You can find my contact information probably by just Googling my name. I, I am reminding uh, every, all the participants that today's meeting is being recorded, as you probably saw on your screen. The Central City Standing Committee is a long-standing convening of public, private, and nonprofit Central City stakeholders and leaders to discuss important topics of the day impacting downtown, and there's a whole bunch of them currently. The meeting is co-hosted by the Portland Business Alliance and Downtown Portland Clean and Safe. These meetings are open to all who wish to participate. The agenda regularly includes a presentation, discussion, and reports uh, from the Enhanced Services District Special Committees focusing on or focused on cleaning and retail advocacy. Today, we are proud to have this committee serve as host for the second of several community listening sessions designed to provide key stakeholders the opportunity to have direct input into the renewed scope of work for the Downtown Portland Clean and Safe Enhanced Service District. The official hosts for today's listening session are Downtown Portland Clean and Safe, the City of Portland, and, downtown, and the Downtown Retail Council. Today's session is, then, is specifically to hear from individuals who reside in the Clean and Safe District and organizations who represent residents of Downtown Portland. What services will make Downtown Portland clean and safe, downtown Portland clean, safe, and successful as we recover from the COVID global pandemic and the economic recession. This is what we're looking forward to hearing about from you today. But before we open it up for, we open up the meeting for comments from the residents. Um, I want to turn it over to Geraldine Moyle, Senior Strategic Projects Manager for the City of Portland who leads the city's work with all enhanced service district districts. She's going to get us started with a short presentation explaining the downtown Portland clean and safe renewal process. Uh, Geraldine, the floor is yours. Thank you. All right, just a technology check. Can everyone see some slides? Excellent. All right, so hello to everyone. Again, um, my name is Geraldine Moyle. I am the Senior Strategic Project Manager at OMF and I'm leading the city team focused on enhanced service districts. With me today is Scott Carter from the Revenue Bureau, Laura Oppenheimer from the OMF Communications Team and Contran from the Mayor Wheeler's office. We want to provide you with some general information on enhanced service districts and downtown clean and safe an overview of why we are here today and information on alternative ways you can provide input into the process. Enhanced service districts are privately funded zones authorized by the city to pay for services in the zone that, that are supplemental to those provided by the city. Enhanced service districts are established and governed by city code title six, special taxes, chapter 6.06, .06, district property management license. These districts are managed and governed by the nonprofit organization established with the creation of each district. Properties within the district pay district property management license fees for the expanded services. 
The city collects the fees and distributes the funds to the nonprofit who provides these services, either directly or by contracting the services. The revenues collected are used to provide cleaning, security, crime prevention, business development, transportation, public policy, housing, and marketing and communication services, or any similar services that benefit properties in the district. The Downtown Clean and Safe Enhanced Service District was established in the city of Portland in 1994, and at four decades old is the city's oldest and largest enhanced service district and encompasses over 200 blocks of downtown. Clean and Safe is the nonprofit formed by the license fee payers to represent the district in ESD conversations and contract renewals and has been the provider of the ESD services since the ESD was created in 1994. The district currently has 426 rate payers. In 2021, there are two actions going before city council in September. The first is periodic review. Every 10 years, starting in 2011, the Downtown Clean and Safe Enhanced Service District is subject to periodic sunset review, where the city council conducts a public hearing or hearings to determine whether the license fee should be terminated. A district can also be terminated during any year if property owners who together contribute more than 33% of the district's total revenue submit written objections. The City Enhanced Service District Partnership, the obligations of each, and the scope of services the fees are funding are formalized in a district management services agreement contract authorized by the City Council. This year, the contract agreement for district management services between the City and Clean and Safe Inc. expires on September 30th, 2021. A large component of the district management services agreement contract is the downtown clean and safe scope of work, which identifies the services that the ESD fees will fund that are above the basic services the city provides citywide. For reference for this conversation, the existing contract scope of work includes the following topic areas. Security, which includes patrol officers and in particular the bike patrol officers, sidewalk ambassadors and administrative support for the district attorney. Janitorial, which includes a focus on cleaning and debris removal, graffiti removal, bagged garbage pickup and sidewalk maintenance such as pressure washing sidewalks that outside the district are property owner responsibilities. Retail business assistance, recruitment and retention, this includes things like business support and promotions and the holiday lighting program. Downtown economic development, which includes downtown clean and safe representation in central city retail office and housing task force and committees. Government relations, which includes downtown clean and safe work with the city, the county, metro, and other public partners regarding obstacles and issues impacting the enhanced service district. And finally, administration, which includes the general operational support needs for downtown clean and safe. The city team has initiated conversations with the clean and safe team to collaboratively negotiate the new contract and scope of services. We need input from ratepayers in the community regarding what is working and not working in the district, opportunities for improvements, and to identify what services are important to consider and include in a new contract and scope of work. There are several opportunities over the next few months to learn more about the district and provide your input. The city with Downtown Clean and Safe are hosting three repair focused listening sessions like this one, as well as two citywide listening sessions. With the lifting of COVID-19 restrictions in early July, we are providing an in-person opportunity as well as virtual options. These details are available on our website. Both the periodic review and the contract renewal will also go before council in September. And once the date and time for those uh, council hearings are available, we'll put them on our website. Which is, we do have a new ESD website where you can find information on enhanced service districts in the city current project and event information, a comment form to provide input or ask questions, links to the code and to the Revenue Bureau for fee payment information, 
and links to each of the three existing enhanced service district websites. And of course, if you would prefer to provide comments, ask questions, or talk to me directly, you're welcome to do so. My email and phone number are on this slide. And they are also on the website. Finally, on a related note, an audit conducted in August 2020 by the Portland City Auditor recommended that the city provide more oversight by reviewing the district's purpose, all districts purpose, and the city's responsibility and revisiting district agreements. The auditor also re recommended that the city develop guidelines for district formation, governance, and management that ensures public input, transparency, and accountability by the districts and their service providers. The city's response to the audit will include a comprehensive review of the districts, community engagement about services provided by enhanced service districts and the impacts districts have on the community, the establishment of clear equitable criteria for the development and oversight of districts, oversight and policy recommendation in line with the city's core values, and a report back to council on the results of the review and the engagement process. This work is in process. Information on scheduled community engagements will be provided here when scheduled on the website. And in the meantime, public comment on the audit and enhanced service districts in general can be made using the comment form on the website or contacting me directly. So that concludes our general overview um, of enhanced service districts and the downtown clean and safe contract renewal discussions. Um, I'm gonna turn it back over to Graciela for the next step. Thank you, Geraldine, for that really good presentation on the process. Um, as now I'd like to turn the meeting over to Sydney Mead, who is Director of Retail Advocacy for Downtown Portland Clean and Safe. Each year as part of its um, contractual agreement with the City of Portland Clean and Safe conducts a survey to measure the sentiment of downtown businesses to inform the public private city retail strategy partnership and to inform the work of, of uh, Clean and Safe. This has been a year uh, unlike no other, so I look forward to seeing those results uh, of that survey. This survey is just one of the many ways Clean and Safe engages with the central city, central city community every year. To frame up the MIDI, Sydney is going to present the findings of the 2020-2021 uh, survey. So to you, Sydney. Thank you so much, um, Graciela, um, and good afternoon to everyone. Again, um, my name is Sydney Mead. I'm the Director of Downtown Programs for Downtown Portland Clean and Safe. Thank everyone for taking time today out of their busy schedule to provide this valuable input. We really do appreciate it. As mentioned, I'm gonna share the results of the 2020 Business Census and Survey. Um, why don't we go ahead and get started? Ah, oh, perfect, thank you. Uh, first, I wanted to share a little bit about the outreach and engagement that we um, are involved in. We've uh, divided these uh, different uh, outreach and engagement into different uh, layers. Uh, we work with ratepayers who are paying for the services that we provide in the enhanced service district. Um, so this would be the 426 ratepayers that you heard of. Um, this is managed by a board of directors and a nonprofit, um, and we hold monthly board meetings as well as executive committee meetings, um, additional board updates. We also have stakeholders, which are the district businesses and residents. Um, so that is um, part of that is the central city standing committee, our downtown retail council, which meets monthly um, relationships with Travel Portland, the Green Loop um, Corridor, as well as uh, the downtown marketing initiative um, partners. And then constituents um, are our community partners, organizations and consumers in the public. So these are our small businesses, um, the or Old Town uh, Community Association. Uh, we're very active with the mayor's action tables and taking a lead with the reputation recovery and rebranding um, action table, um, as well as the clean and green action table and the events action table. Um, so next slide. All right, so about this survey, uh, we have conducted this survey every year for the last 20 years to understand the conditions of the businesses in the city center. 
uh, this year uh, due to COVID and for other reasons, we uh, moved the survey online. Um, it reflects the opinion of the businesses within the I-405 loop. Uh, and we asked respondents to uh, answer the questions uh, for their businesses between October 2019 and October 2020. Um, we used a combination of direct mail to our uh, respondents as well as uh, email to gather responses. We ended up with about 10% of our, um, our uh, 3,200 uh, locations. Next slide. Yeah, so um, this first question about downtown livability, um, we've got this in a pie chart um, to kind of express um, the opinions that we heard back from folks. Um, figure six, are there adequate services for a homeless and mentally ill? Um, and then you can see that in this uh, salmon color, 39% uh, said not at all. Um, we had a, a large chunk of 22% indicate somewhat. Um, and then 3% um, said hardly. Uh, figure seven, are there adequate rules for behavior in public spaces? Um, and again, we're seeing 65% of respondents said that there were not um, adequate rules for behavior in public spaces. Um, we had some additional folks, um, I guess that's 20% indicate hardly, 14% indicated somewhat. Um, next slide. Uh, this graph is a little bit nicer to see the change over time. Um, and as you can see, it's a little different format. This is um, asking folks about downtown cleanliness. And each of these lines indicate um, their feeling um, on downtown cleanliness. This, again, this kind of um, pinkish salmon color line is needs improvement. And we really did see um, Starting really in 2018, there was just a stark um, need uh, suddenly for downtown cleanliness, and there was a real uh, sense that things had really shifted and our downtown core was not as clean as it should have been. Um, and you can kind of see this pale um, blue line is the uh, folks that felt that things were doing okay. Uh, next slide. The impact of people experiencing homelessness, um, mental illness, and or addicted to intoxic intoxicants uh, on the street. Uh, so again, it's that same kind of line chart um, where the salmon color is uh, saying not much. Um, <laughs> um, uh, and then uh, somewhat, hardly, and not at all. And so again, what we're seeing is that we um, are really feeling the impacts of that starting um, again in uh, 2018. Next slide. The effects of graffiti and vandalism. Um, so again, um, we're seeing these trend lines where right around that 2018, 2019, um, we're really feeling the impacts of graffiti and vandalism on the streets of Portland. Next slide. Overall, how does your business view public safety in the defined area above? And so we asked folks to take a look at our enhanced service district and the borders of the enhanced service district. Again, kind of just reflecting a, a real shift in 2018 um, and folks feeling that, that safety has become an issue um, starting at that point. Next slide. If you call for downtown Portland clean and safe services in the past year, how satisfied were you with those services? Um, here we can see that 36% um, of the folks were um, very um, much satisfied. 36% um, were also somewhat satisfied. Um, so we do take a, a, a bit of pride in these results. Um, so um, pleased to see that, that even in 2020 that there was um, folks that were still fairly pleased with our um, services. Next slide. Um, so many folks um, don't realize that Downtown Clean and Safe um, is actually the organization that provides holiday lighting through the downtown core. Um, it's traditionally a very popular um, program and we're seeing again that people are very pleased um, with the results of the holiday lighting program and feels like it did add um, even in this year um, to the sense of livability and vibrancy in the downtown core. 
Uh, next slide. Okay, so um, most important factors for a business locating or staying downtown. Um, and so this is just kind of the top um, uh, factors for folks um, and how they rated in 2020. You'll see in 2019, um, we did get results back from 2019, just as um, things were shutting down with COVID. And so we, we didn't have an opportunity uh, due to COVID to process those. Um, but you can see how things ranked um, with central location being um, and proximity to other businesses being kind of the key uh, to people's factors for determining where to put their business. And then factors that need improvement. Um, we again are seeing homelessness, cleanliness, vandalism, um, uh, panhandlers came up on this survey, cost of parking and availability of parking also uh, came up on the survey. Next slide. Yeah, so that is um, pretty much it for the downtown uh, census and survey. It does live on our website and you can also find additional details um, from previous years, um, surveys and results. Uh, and you can also follow us on these social channels and at downtownportland.org. Again, thank you for taking time to be with us today. I will turn this meeting back to um, Garcia or? Graciela, uh, Sydney, uh, thank you. Well, it, uh, thanks for that fascinating results on a whole lot of levels. Um, and it's interesting to follow the trend lines over the many years that we've conducted that survey. Well, now uh, we're, looks like we're ready to open the listening session. We have a list of residents signed up for that meeting and we will provide each of you an opportunity to provide comment. We hope that you will limit your comments uh, to two minutes today to allow for everyone to speak. Today's session is dedicated to the input of downtown residents and organizations who represent downtown residents and neighborhoods. If you are not a downtown resident, you'll, you will have uh, several other opportunities to provide include, uh, input, including a July 24th, uh, two sessions for the community at large and August 20th uh, with clean and safe rate payers. So now we're ready to take comment and hear from the downtown resi residents about how clean and safe can specifically address each of the, these areas with its enhanced services. We're going to take comment in the order that folks registered. When I call your name and business and organization, uh, your mic will be on and you will have two minutes to comment. If you would prefer not to comment, you can say no thank you or no comment and we will move on to the next person. Um, and so with that, uh, let me start off. I have the list right here, so hold on. I am going to start with Laura Binham. Is Laura on? No, Laura. Okay, no, Lindsay is uh, the next one. Caitlin, Caitlin D. Hi, yes, I'm here, I can speak. Um, so hi everybody, um, I'm Caitlin. Um, I organize with Western Regional Advocacy Project and we've been doing research on enhanced services districts in Portland. Um, in particular, we've been really concerned with the impacts of enhanced services districts on unhoused community members. Um, we have concerns with the security portions of the enhanced service district, in particular, Clean and Safe's contract with Portland Patrol um, Inc. Um, so with that said, we've been working with community residents, um, especially unhoused residents within the district, who we feel are not being super represented in these conversations. And we've come up with a list of some recommendations for the upcoming contract including um, two recommendations from the Portland Committee on Community Engaged Policing, um, which is PSEP. Um, that is an entity that was created by Mayor Wheeler. Um, they recently recommended removing private security patrols from public spaces due to their impacts on unhoused community members, as well as removing the ability to, of enhanced services districts to fund um, Portland police officers. Um, we recognize right now that there's six Portland police officers who are being managed by this enhanced services district. And we have major concerns 
regarding transparency and accountability and the harms that is um, creating on unhoused people. Um, as well as because these are private entities, we are concerned with public money going into them. There are public properties who are paying into the district and we believe they should be exempt from that. Um, we also have concerns with um, the management of this ESD with um, Portland Business Alliance do, um, doing the management services. Um, we believe that some of that relationship, especially money going to pay for Portland Business Alliance staff is very problematic and not benefiting people who reside in the district. Um, we'd also like to see more public input, um, in particular, not just these listening sessions, but potentially, especially because these operate in public space, having the ability for people to actually vote on them if they're operating in the public way, right of way in any way. Um, and the last two things that we've been recommending is we have concerns with the relationship with the district attorney's office through the downtown security network and would like to see that relationship um, dissolved as well as um, finally creating an opt out system for residents and businesses who do not wish to receive these services. Um, because again, we feel that not all residents and businesses within the district are feeling representative and they shouldn't have to pay into a district if they do not want those services. Um, so those are just many of the concerns. We've also just had general concerns with some of the, um, excuse me, sorry, um, with just how um, these listening sessions have been set up. We would like to see more intentional outreach to community members, especially making more opportunities for unhoused community members within the district to be able to speak about their experiences. Uh, so yeah, that's about all I'll say for now. Um, we definitely wanna continue this dialogue um, because this issue is not going away. We've got two months and we'd like to see a lot more public participation. Um, and that's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, let me move on. Let's see. How about Anita Davidson? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me just fine? We can hear you just fine, Anita. Okay, Proceed. perfect. Thank you. Well, by introduction, I'm a 10 year resident of downtown and a condominium owner here. And so therefore I am already a taxpayer as well as a ratepayer into this ESD. So one thing I'd like to say first is that there seems to be a little mischaracterization about the voluntary nature of this ESD um, fee schedule. Um, Earlier, even today, Sydney Mead said in her comments that it's her and the, the, the ratepayers have a, a voluntary aspect about this, and, and we don't view it that way. We definitely are charged for this. We're actually, in summary, I can quickly say what I want to say. We're forced to pay to support a private organization, which is the Portland Business Alliance, that has its own members for services we don't see that are not supplemental which are services we expect the government to provide anyway. And what I'll try to say is a few perspectives here that others may not have already brought out. For example, the lack of transparency, the need for more accountability, the audit already points this out and members of city staff have already described to me that they understand those are places for improvement. So I'd like to just comment on a couple of things more. First off about the services being supplemental. Let's look at the garbage cans. Here's a very uh, on hand one. You can go stand at the corner of Northwest 9th and 11th. You can see there are a couple of garbage cans provided by Clean and Safe. And you can see a bunch of really nice garbage cans provided by someone in the Pearl District. Now, I don't know if those are business owners over there or if it's um, uh, the government, already the city providing those. But I can say that they look really nice and they look clean and they look emptied out. So if I walk back home from that uh, Pearl District, I see multiple garbage cans supplied by Clean and Safe, which are filthy, dirty, overflowing. And I can't in any way imagine that being described as a supplemental and adequate service. So we're not getting services. Another one would be the police officers. I think the prior speaker was generous to say that there is an assumption that either four or six police officers actually augment downtown. That cannot possibly be the case in a police department that has abolished its traffic division and placed 30 or those 20 officers 
back onto the street to patrol. So what we have is an agreement that the police, Portland Police Bureau, as underfunded and understaffed as they are, are barely able to provide service to numbers one and two category um, offenses and the types of things like panhandling, um, vandalism, um, uh, shoplifting that business owners need and uh, that would help also residents are not being addressed. But I also have a concern about private security how we can give armed private security <laughs> to be placed in public spaces. What is their jurisdiction in those public spaces? Um, is everybody doing this aware that most officer shootings involved in office, involve an officer's weapon? Um, it just doesn't make sense to me that we're adding private security in a jurisdiction that there's uh, police officers clearly have that jurisdiction. Anita, yeah. you're over time. Um... Would you like to say your final comments and then I'll move on? Uh, yes, my final comment is this. I didn't understand this to be a recommendation session. I thought this was a session to find out whether or not the city council should renew or terminate the ESD. And I agree that uh, I believe that neither should happen. We should take more time to review the ESD uh, as long as necessary like the pilot program out in Southeast Portland is being reviewed and reviewed before it's expanded. We need to start back from scratch with the ESD program downtown and uh, address the boundaries is another issue which needs to be addressed. Those are arbitrary and uh, definitely not covering this, the I-5, I-405 territory. Sydney Mead said the survey went to 3,200 businesses. There are only 426 ratepayers in the downtown ESD. So you're reaching further for your um, spans of coverage than it actually you're charging ratepayers. So we need to look at the boundaries. Thank you, Anita, for those comments. Uh, Alexandra Furkak, I apologize if I am butchering your name. Alexandra, you're muted. Yes, hello, can you hear me? We can hear you, thank you. Yeah, I'm, and I'm sorry, I did not sign up to testify. I am just signed up to listen in, so you can skip over me. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Alexandra. Uh, let's see, how about Cody Jennison? Uh, I also just signed up to, to listen, not participating. Thank you, Cody. Uh, let me see, here we go. Elizabeth Kilpack. Hi, thank you. I also signed up to listen in. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, Trisha Patterson. Hi, hello, can you hear me? We can hear you, Trisha. Great, well, thank you for letting me testify. Um, my name is Trisha. Uh, I am not a rate payer. I was just signing up to listen in, but I would like to say that um, I agree with the first person who testified and um, a little bit with the second person who testified. It really made sense to me. Uh, when I read PSEP's uh, recommendations, I was really alarmed. And so I would hope that um, those recommendations would be taken very seriously, as well as the recommendations made by the auditor. Um, I have serious concerns about the impact of the ESD on our unhoused neighbors and um, just how unfair this, this fee seems to be. There's a lot of business owners who um, are not seeing the services. They still have to pay into it. And, and so I think we need to take these concerns very seriously when we are thinking about how to restructure um, and change the constitution of this ESD. Thank you. Thank you, Tricia. Um, let's see, Adele Pelletier. I would like to, can you hear me now? We can hear you Adele, mm -hmm. you have the floor. Okay, um, I am a uh, resident in the uh, clean and safe area. I wanna piggyback a little bit on some of the comments made by uh, one of the previous speakers, Anita, and I especially want to address this downtown survey where the, there's 3,200 businesses, even though there aren't nearly that many included in clean and safe as far as a, a payee. And yet, where were the residents who are in the clean and safe area surveyed? 
No one has really asked us what our opinions are. And it seems as if maybe the um, businesses are, are where you focus your attention. Um, I also would like to comment on the, um, the fact that most of us who live in the area thought that clean and safe was the people that come around and, and clean the community, which you know is run through Central City Concern and which we really appreciate. They do an excellent job and they're a joy to interact with. However, that's only, I think, one eighth of the total budget. And to learn that a lot of the rest of the budget is filtered through the business association on its way to other providers, including um, this um, private patrol, armed private patrol service. Now, I wonder about why we have a private patrol service when we are paying for a certain number of uh, police officers. And, that, and I just saw on your uh, website that it says bicycle officers, or maybe that was in one of the presentations, bicycle officers. In fact, when we contacted the police department, they said, no, what it is is that um, they promise to respond to any level one or two incident. Well, I would hope that the police are responding to any level one or two incident anywhere in the city without having to pay an extra amount for four police officers. So I would like to see that addressed. I would like to see um, uh, a little bit more transparency where you reach out to the residents who live in the community right now. And also the discussion about whether or not about how one would opt out, how a building would opt out of this program. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you, Adele. We're gonna go on to Richard Perkins. Is Richard? I too am just listening. I signed up to testify on the 27th. Thank you, Richard, appreciate you. Uh, Linda Sen. Linda, you're muted. Oh, thank you. Hi, can you all hear me now? We can hear you now. Uh, my name is Linda. My pronoun is queen or anything respectable will do just fine. I did want to take a little pinch of my time to um, recognize that we're doing this work and having this conversation on occupied land um, of indigenous peoples. Uh, I also organize with Sisters of the Road, RAP, and um, Stop the Sweets. I am also a seven-year resident of the Pearl District. I wanted to um, bring to you some of the community concerns that we've been hearing while we're organizing. And one of them is um, to remove the security patrol from public spaces. Um, public spaces are just that public. Enforcement of rules cannot be arbitrarily um, decided by private entities so it's kind of confusing how that's happening in our community without the say from um, voters since it's a public space. Um, also, I'd like to say we could work on removing the ability of enhanced service districts to fund PPP sworn officers. As we've seen in recent news, um, some of these officers that are working in the NANS service districts have used their weapons and um, also have, um, because of that, people have died. And when it comes to private policing of public spaces, we run into concerns of how our officers are being um, held accountable for their actions. And it seems as though in these enhanced service districts that there's less and less accountability. And so their actions become more and more um, bolden because there's no one to hold them accountable for their behaviors and how they're interacting with the community, especially those that are perceived to have mental health issues or intoxicant issues. It just seems that those, those folks are um, more so just ignored in the process, I feel like. I've seen a lot of people whom are living on the streets and um, struggling day to day with that and little or no resolve to support them. And it seems as though 
that that is the status quo. Um, the other thing that we've been talking about is the removal of public money from ESDs altogether. Um, public money, public funds, um, as far as I can remember, are supposed to be um, allocated by voters' choices since it's public money. And I don't hear or see anywhere in this that voters are being asked how we'd like to spend our money. My next concern is how how can we um, uh, Linda, let me interrupt you just briefly you you're over time so why don't you give us your last concern. My last concern is how do we disentangle the Portland Business Alliance from clean and safe clean and safe is a 501 C three organization. The Portland Business Alliance is a registered 501 C six transferring cash balances and decision making powers between the two separate legal entities um, is problematic and should probably stop being a board member I know that that is a um, more than blurred line as we say in the business that is a confused line and I feel like the city should address that immediately um, again thank you for your time and listening to my concerns as a resident. Thank you, Linda, for your time. Uh, we'll turn now to Mary Shaw. Mary, you're mute. Oh, there you go. Um, I too am a, a resident of downtown. Um, I've lived downtown for seven years and I am in agreement with um, much of what the previous speakers have, have brought up. Um, if I'm allowed to, I would like to give the rest of my time back to Anita Davidson. Um, well, I don't know if, uh, if, if we're allowed to, but I'm going to allow that if Anita has more, more uh, comments to make. I believe we gave her more than her allotted time in the first instance, actually, uh, Mary, but let me just ask Anita that. Uh, yes, thank you. I just wanted to say one more thing about the conflict of interest uh, that we perceive and uh, ask actually and, and specifically, what actually is Clean and Safe doing? We understand the name, we understand the entity, but why are they there? Because uh, really, uh, even as the audit pointed out, this is a, a, an agreement between the city and the Portland Business Alliance. Um, the scope of work really mirrors what the PBA wants now, which is the business development, public policy, marketing and communication. Those are far away from what the goals initially were in the 1990s for trash pickup by disadvantaged individuals, tours of the city to promote downtown and the holiday lighting, which is only about $300,000 of a $6 million budget. So it seems to me that a lot of what is uh, is happening is because perhaps this is just one idea, clean and safe may not lobby. Clean and safe cannot be a political, is not a political entity as a 501c3, but the, the Portland Business Alliance is not restricted in that way. In fact, part of its work is uh, political advocacy. So there is a conflict in that regard that I would like to have addressed or at least explained um, as we go forward. And thank then, you. okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anita. Uh, Candy Wilson. I think I just signed up to to listen. Um, I only I I I suppose I could comment uh, briefly. At any rate, uh, I am a resident property owner in Old Town, and uh, the services that Clean and Safe. Um, supposedly provides, uh, and we pay in excess of $8,500 a year to clean and save. Uh, we've never had graffiti washed off our walls. We've never had our sidewalks um, power washed. Even though uh, tent campers have been on our sidewalks, urinating, uh, defecating, um, and everything else goes along with it, the garbage, uh, we live in a, in a garbage dump right now, um, which I understand because of the tents, Clean and Safe is not able to do anything about. Um, it seems to me, however, that they could uh, act as a reporting uh, um, entity uh, for Hucker 
uh, because to say that this uh, neighborhood is clean or safe is a gross understatement. Uh, the rats that are now occupying our streets and our sidewalks is unacceptable. Um, and also some of the same issues that uh, others have stated regarding the association of clean and safe with the PBA, uh, it almost seems uh, illegal in some cases. I would like to see those issues addressed uh, to be taking 40% of the clean and safe budget to pay for the executives of PBA um, just doesn't sound exactly uh, kosher. Um, I, right now, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Candy. Appreciate your comments. Uh, I am at the end of my list. Uh, I'm just going to make one last call to see if anybody has one last comment to make uh, that hasn't already spoken that would wish to, but didn't sign up. Well, with that, um, I'd like to thank all of you who participated in today's session. Uh, the input and ideas presented were exactly what we hope to receive and will help shape the new clean and safe scope of work. We look forward to our next listening session on July 29th. And with that, I'm gonna call this meeting adjourned. Thank you again, thank you so much uh, and go on and have a good day.